For the next four weeks in lab, you are going to be working with the mixture of two compounds that we have in this vial for you. So each one of you is going to be given um, one of these vials. It has two different compounds in it, and the entire point of this four-week experiment is for you to separate the two compounds and then characterize them and figure out what, what the identity of the two compounds. So the two comp of the two compounds, one of them is going to be a carboxylic acid, and the other one is going to be either an alcohol or a ketone. We are going to use the reactivity of carboxylic acids with sodium carbonate solutions to be able to separate the two from each other. So a carboxylic acid, as you've already learned in class, can react with sodium carbonate to convert it to its sodium salt, at which point this becomes an ionic compound, which means it can be dissolved in water. So that's what you're going to do first off in lab. You are going to pour the contents of your vial into something called a separatory funnel. And you are going to add some methyl terbutyl ether, which is our organic solvent, and a solution of sodium carbonate in water. The sodium carbonate is going to react with your acid, convert it to its sodium salt, at which point this becomes aqueous. It goes into that water layer. However, alcohols and ketones do not react this way. These are acid-base neutral compounds. So these will not be ionic and they will stay in the organic MTBE layer. A separatory funnel is a new piece of equipment and doing an aqueous workup of this type is a new technique for you guys. So I am going to go through very briefly how you perform an aqueous workup. Okay, so this is a crude drawing of a separatory funnel. What this is used for is to be able to separate two different phases, an aqueous layer and an organic layer. And so you are going to pour your unknown into your separatory funnel, and you're going to combine it with some methyl terbutyl ether and some um, sodium carbonate solution. And methyl terbutyl ether is less dense than water, so that is going to be the upper layer, MTBE. Whereas your lower layer is going to be your aqueous layer. That means your neutral compound is going to be up in the MTBE layer throughout this process. And because the first thing that we're doing when we add an aqueous solution is adding the sodium carbonate, it's going to convert the carboxylic acid, as I said, into a sodium salt. And so you are going to have your acid in your aqueous layer. Because these are not miscible, they don't mix in each other, you're going to be able to empty the aqueous layer into another container in Erlenmeyer flask in the bottom through the stopcock. That will leave your organic layer in the top, at which point you'll be able to do a little bit more work in the organic layer. So once we've done that, we're going to have our aqueous acid down in our flask. And we'll be left with our solution of our neutral compound dissolved in MTBE. However, it is not just methyl terbutyl ether and your neutral unknown in this solution right now. There is also ethanol because in order to make this unknown mixture, I had to dissolve the carboxylic acid in a solution of MTBE and ethanol. So the ethanol is still up in the organic layer as well. And when we say that water and organic solvents are not miscible, that's not completely true. There is a small amount of water that stays dissolved in the MTBE as well. So now that we've taken care of our acid, that is off in a flask sitting over on the side we need to perform a set of kind of purification techniques where we are going to get rid of the ethanol and the water so that we are left with just our neutral compound dissolved in the MTB. The first thing that we are going to do is try to get rid of the ethanol. We're going to get rid of the ethanol by adding water. 
the theory here is that ethanol is more soluble in water than it is in MTBE. And so that is going to drag the ethanol down into the water layer and we can drain that off, at which point now we just have methyl terbutyl ether, our neutral, and water. To get rid of the water, we are going to treat this with a saturated solution of sodium chloride in water. Uh, what the saturated sodium chloride does is it basically tries to dilute the salt in its solution by dragging whatever water is still present in the methyl terbutyl ether into it. So that will get rid of the water when we drain that off. At that point, we'll be left with pretty much pure methyl terbutyl ether and our neutral compound. However, there is still going to be a little tiny bit of water left in there, which we do need to get rid of. Those last few molecules of water we're going to treat with anhydrous sodium sulfate. That is a solid, and it is going to absorb any remaining water in that solution into its crystalline lattice, leaving us with a nice pure neutral compound dissolved in methyl terbutyl ether. Okay, so this is the separatory funnel. You do have one of these in your locker, and so it's got the stopcock on the bottom, and it has a ground glass joint on the top. To go along with the separatory funnel, you do have a cap for the top, but we have two different types. We have some that are made of plastic. They're actually PTFE, um, but others will have a gla ground glass stopcock or a ground glass stopper for the top of your separatory funnel. If you have a plastic one, you don't need to do anything. However, if you have a ground glass stopper, the ground glass is actually kind of a rough surface. It doesn't feel that way, but it is. And when we put this into the top of the separatory funnel, it actually makes little openings in which the liquids that you have in your separatory funnel can flow out of it. So if you have a ground glass one, we need you to apply some grease to your stopper so that we seal all of those little gaps and crevices. In the fume hood, you will find a bunch of little syringes that don't have needles on them um, that are filled with grease. You don't need a lot. Probably just about a centimeter strip is all that you need. And you're going to put it on the upper portion of your stopper. And then you're just going to push it around with your finger and make sure that you've coated all the way around the stopper on the top portion. And when you do this, you'll see that it gives the part that has grease kind of a wet look because you filled in all of those cracks. So now that that is ready to go, to suspend the separatory funnel above your flask, you're going to be using an iron ring. These are underneath the sink cabinet along with the ring stands. So this holds on to the separatory funnel on a ring stand. So you're just going to put it on your ring stand so that it is high enough that an Erlenmeyer flask will fit underneath it and you're good to go. So as you are instructed in the lab, you are going to go ahead and pour your unknown into your separatory funnel. Do use woo, the funnel that I just dropped. Um, put your plastic funnel on top of it so that you don't spill the compounds outside of the separatory funnel and make sure that your stopcock is closed and just in case you should always have some kind of container underneath your separatory funnel the last thing you want to do is pour your unknown in right at the start of lab and find out your stopcock was open and it goes all over the bench so you just pour that in and now what i'm going to do is add the organic layer which is about 15 milliliters of methyl terbutyl ether None of these volumes have to be exact. We're just adding enough of each to make the separation work. And the next one that I'm adding is 15 milliliters of 5% sodium carbonate in water. And if we zoom in, you can see right away that this does immediately form two different layers. And so you can see there's a line right here where the bottom portion is the aqueous layer, the sodium carbonate solution, and the top portion is the methyl terbutyl ether. However, 
Um, simply pouring the sodium carbonate through the methyl turbutyl ether is not going to have all of the acid react with it. So that's why we have a nice stopper to go on top of our separatory funnel. We are going to take this out, and if you could zoom out a little bit, I am going to show you how to mix these thoroughly yet safely. So, um, whenever you mix an acid with sodium bicarbonate or sodium carbonate, you are going to have some carbon dioxide gas produced, and so this is going to build up pressure inside it as I allow the acid to react. So I am going to start shaking it, but I'm only I'm going to shake it a couple of times, very gently, and then I'm going to point it away from everybody in the room, and I'm going to open the stopcock to let it vent. So there's a couple of shakes, and then I'm going to point it up, and if you heard that hiss, that was the carbon dioxide being released. That still was not enough to react all of it. You really need to shake these very well to get them to interact with each other. So we're just going to keep doing this a few times. And we're going to keep just shaking and venting and shaking and venting until it is no longer venting. The other thing I want to point out is the way that I am holding on to the stopcock. I am not just putting a finger on the top of it. What I'm actually doing is wrapping my two fingers on the side of the stopper so that I have a nice solid hold on it in case it does overpressure or it wants to fall out when I have it tipped upside down. Um, if you do have the plastic type stopper, what you're going to do is put your fingers across the two orange or red parts that are going across, not just one finger on top, do two like this. So we can just continue on, mix and vent, mix and vent, and I'm going to ask my cameraman to not be standing over there um, because I'm going to kind of point it that way, I think, maybe. Just make sure that you do close the stopcock before you start mixing it or it will launch itself out as you're shaking it. And then you want to give it some really, really good shakes just to make sure that you are thoroughly mixing the sodium carbonate with the acid inside that flask. And so that's about all the shaking it really needs. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back on the ring and I'm going to allow the layers to separate. And if you want to zoom back in. The other thing I'm doing is I'm taking off the stopper. These layers separate much more quickly if it is unstoppered. So you can see that these are very quickly resolving themselves back into their individual layers. And you want to wait until it seems like everything has settled out. Um, and once you stop seeing a lot of movement, except for me knocking the ring stand, you can go ahead and drain the lower layer using the stopcock into a flask that we told you to label it acid. Because remember, as I said, the top layer is your organic layer that has your neutral in it. Your carboxylic acid is now present in the lower aqueous layer in its sodium salt form. So we're going to drain that off um, and we're going to try our best not to get any of the organic layer to go down into there. And it gets much faster as it goes down. So make sure you have good control over your stopcock and you're just going to let it go out until my goggles are falling and until you are just above the stopcock with that organic layer, right? Maybe it can go a little bit more even, a couple more drops. There we go. So now I have drained, I now have that aqueous layer, which is a sodium carbonate solution with my sodium salt of my um, acid in this flask. I am not going to throw the contents of this flask away. This is one of my unknowns. For now, we're just going to put that away. Okay, so I've done everything. At this point, the only thing that should be up here is my neutral compound dissolved in MTBE, but there is still a little tiny bit of water dissolved into it. So what I'm going to have to do now is um, dry this with some anhydrous sodium sulfate, which is in a jar over in your supply hood. So as I said, what this is going to do is just drag onto to that residual water, grab it and bring it into its crystalline lattice, 
Um, and so in order to use this, I do have to transfer my organic layer into a new Erlenmeyer flask. I can't just do this straight in the separatory funnel. What I don't want to do, however, is drain this liquid through the stopcock because there is still sodium chloride solution down in the stopcock hole in the bottom of the stopcock and even a little bit above here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to pour out the top. And so we're going to pause here for a second just to rearrange the camera so that we can show you that really quickly. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to have to do if you did have one of those glass stoppers, um, I don't want to pour my MTBE from my separatory funnel through the grease that's on the inside of this joint. So we're going to have to wash the grease off of that. It's actually very easy. In the waste hood, you're going to see a box of Kim wipes and you're also going to see this bottle of cyclohexane. Now this bottle is a pump bottle. All you have to do is flip open the cap and then if I squeeze down on it, it puts a, just about a milliliter of cyclohexane into the top of here so you can just pump it with a Kim wipe and it soaks into the Kim wipe. Then you're going to just kind of stuff it inside the neck of the separatory funnel and rub the cyclohexane around the joint, that is going to dissolve the grease off of it. And if you just blow into it, you can see it turns nice and frosty again, showing you that you really have removed all of the cyclohexane. So that's nice and clean and frosty now. So now I'm not gonna get grease into the flask. What I'm gonna do is pour the methyl terbutyl ether layer into here um, but I'm going to do it carefully because remember we said there is still um, some water in the bottom of the separatory funnel. We don't want that blob of water to go into the um, Erlenmeyer flask. So we're going to pour it kind of slowly and we're going to watch for that drop of water to show up. And so try to get it right on the camera. There we go. It's hard to see it at first, but as you pour off more of the organic layer, and I did film this a little bit earlier and I wasn't happy with it, but I do have a better view of this from underneath. There is a little bubble of water down at the bottom of the, uh, the separatory funnel ring where my finger is pointing. So I'm gonna try not to bring that over when I'm pouring. If it does come over, you need to pipette it back out of your flask before you add the sodium sulfate you are not going to be able to add enough sodium sulfate to get rid of that amount of water. Um, so now I've gotten as much of the organic portion out as I feel comfortable with. I am going to add just a couple mils of MTBE to the SEP funnel just to try and rinse the rest of the alcohol into the flask. We'll pour that off and again I'm going to try not to get that bubble of water and then we will be ready to dry with sodium sulfate. All right, and I have retained that water inside. So if you do happen to pour it all the way in, here's what it's going to look like. So this is a view from underneath the flask. This is the bubble of water that I pour, I let go into there. Um, you would have to take a pasture pipette and suck that out before you add the sodium sulfate. So I'm gonna do that really quickly off camera, and then I'm gonna show you the sodium sulfate drying. Okay, so this is the organic layer. Um, I got that water blob out of the bottom, but, and it may be kind of hard for you to tell right now, but this is actually a little bit cloudy. And so that tells me that there is still quite a bit of water in here, but since I don't see an actual like second layer or a bubble of water sitting on the bottom, I will be able to get rid of that water using the anhydrous sodium sulfate. So what I'm going to do is take some sodium sulfate and I'm only going to put about a pea-sized amount um, and I know um, what is a pea-sized amount it tends to be difficult. Um, it is just the tip of my micro or my scupula. Um, it's maybe the length of my finger or my thumbnail. Um, so I'm just going to throw that in there and that is going to merrily sit there and try to absorb water and we're going to help it by giving it a little bit of swirling so that it's really mixing and we're going to let that sit for a few minutes 
and we will take another look at it to see if we need to add more. So in order for us to tell whether or not we are ready to um, move this on to the next step, which is going to be to decant it into a round bottom flask, um, the two things that you're looking for are um, the, a, the organic layer being absolutely crystal clear, which this now is, and also you can look to see if you see freely flowing sodium sulfate granules and so what you're going to have to do is think about what did the sodium sulfate look like how small was it when you put it into the flask um, if you still see a lot of particles that are that size kind of freely floating around when you swirl the solution and your organic layer is completely crystal clear then this will be ready to go and your lab assistants will be checking on that to make sure that you don't have any water left in here before they take your flask to have it rotary evaporated to strip off the methanol or the MTBE. Um, so hopefully this will go fairly well for you guys. As you can see, it's really not all that long of an operation. Um, so that should leave you plenty of time to write in your notebook and to finish isolating. Whoops finish isolating that carboxylic acid, which as I said, all you have to do is add hydrochloric acid to this until it is very, very acidic and we'll have pH paper out for you to measure your solution's pH throughout the process. And then it will solidify and you'll be able to isolate the acid through vacuum filtration. This one, um, your organic, you're going to carefully decant it into a round bottom flask, making sure that you do not get any of the solid sodium sulfate into the round bottom flask and then the laboratory assistants are going to take this and they're going to put it on a rotary evaporator that is going to basically distill off the methyl terbutyl ether so just like you did with the distillation lab earlier this semester methyl terbutyl ether has a much 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 lower boiling point than your unknown does and so the methyl terbutyl ether as we heat it up and we put it under vacuum is going to distill off leaving just your unknown in that round bottom flask and that will be the end of lab once you clean up you should be good to go and i'm going to end the video now um good luck guys bye